Folks, obviously this is a really small session, and that's not surprising because uh, when you're talking urban districts across the state, you're talking really a handful of districts. Um, so feel free to move up if you want to. You can stay seated where you are. I'm going to tell you it's probably going to be a, a faster session, so you will likely be released earlier because a lot of the session has been focused on audience questions. So come up with tons of them. I'll still come out there and walk around. <laughs> Before we get started... Make sure I have everything here. I'm going to do a quick intro of who's up here on our panel, and then we'll go back and ask them some questions. So down there on the far end is Ophelia King from Milwaukee Public Schools. She's like waving away. Then I have Eric Mueller, who's really Rita Atkinson from Appleton. <laughs> Eric is filling in for Rita, and we're glad to have him. Thank you. And then I have Ryan Rui from Beloit School District. And then Joanne Quick, who you heard actually get a shout out from our keynote speaker today. And I'm going to give you another hand. Thank you for your service. You were great. And she has been doing some phenomenal work in West Dallas, West Milwaukee. Um, I'm Robin Crayer Kubitschek, and I'm going to be leading this panel. And we accepted and we put out in spring applications for pilots for the Academic and Career Planning Pilot Project. We had 61 applications come in out of 424 school districts, and we accepted and selected 25. And let me tell you, it was a very difficult decision. So if any of you applied or tried to uh, and didn't get it, we certainly didn't want it to feel like a loss, but there was only so many we could accept it. And what we tried to do was find pilots that represented different parts of the state, different locations, different sizes, but also seemed to indicate a no matter what their starting point was, they seemed to have a team ready to go. There was a passion, there was an excitement. It wasn't somebody just filling out an application. It, it, it looked like from their application submission that there was some connection, passion, and ready to move forward. So what I'm gonna first have this group do, and even though it's a small group, we're still filming this for others around the state to uh, watch. So that's why we're continuing our session, sitting all up here, otherwise I'd have us all down there mixed in a circle with you. <laughs> But starting with, uh, who wants to start? Uh, da, da, da. Ophelia, as she's smiling at me. Why don't you introduce yourself, your background, and tell us your role in the ACP pilot in your district. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ophelia King, and can you all hear me? Okay. Um, I am the school counseling specialist for Milwaukee Public Schools. I currently um, work with all the school counselors in the district. I also uh, oversee the implementation of career cruising. Um, and in terms of the academic and career planning, um, as you know, a lot of work has been done on the school counseling side. Um, and I'm a part of our pilot team and really working with uh, other departments in the district to sort of bridge um, some of the silos and bring us all together uh, for one common goal. Yeah, we'll go right down the line. Don't okay. worry, you'll all get picked on to go first next time. <laughs> um, my name is Eric Miller. I'm a school counselor at Appleton East High School, and uh, I've been part of the ACP pilot process since the beginning. I was also brought on into our um, career-based learning district committee, which has really spearheaded um, this process. Um, prior to the pilot process, and so you can't really have a career-based learning curriculum or a work-based learning curriculum without um, integrating the ACP process um, and what that looks like and what's containing in that and you know the partnership between community, schools, students, families, um, all that. And so my role is partnering within my building, um, working very closely with our district pilot team, but then also that bigger um, CBL work team, um, as well as um, working with all the school counselors um, at, at the high school level, collaborating and seeing what we're doing across the three different buildings. I am uh, Ryan Rui, and I'm the CT director for the Beloit School District, and really uh, I'm also the pilot coordinator. I, my role, um, kind of a, it's almost like a hybrid role. So. Most of my responsibility is at the high school, and um, I'm in charge of all the CT program at the high school, um, as well as the intermediate buildings. Um, although, uh, you know, we've kind of decided as a district to currently 
really pilot within our own district. And we started off at our high school and are planning to actually begin implementation at our intermediate buildings in December. And I can talk a little bit about that as we, as we get going here. But um, again, the whole, uh, another connection that I would have is with our business community and getting their involvement um, through enrichment experiences for our students. And again, I can talk uh, in a little bit more detail as we go through the process, so. Thank you. Joanne. I'm Joanne Quick from the West Dallas, West Milwaukee School District. And my position title is School Counseling Specialist. I have been in West Dallas since the 2008-2009 school year. And um, in the 2009-2010 school year, we began working on academic and career plans for all students in that district. And over the years, uh, we have developed uh, curriculum, all curriculum directly related to careers and academic success, and also in the area of SEL, social emotional learning. Basically, the position that I really have, I think would be more clearly explained as I am the curriculum coordinator for school counseling in the district. And that was a huge undertaking for us uh, in these last uh, many years that we have. We teach at this point in time 199 lessons K-5 through grade 12 in academic success and careers. And in SEL, K-5 through grade 12, we teach 398 lessons in SEL each year. And so we have developed a curriculum that we think supports school-based ACP planning. Uh, West Dallas, just so that you would be familiar with uh, our school district, we're the 12th largest school district in the state of Wisconsin. We have nearly 10,000 students in three high schools, four intermediate schools, and 11 elementary schools. The greatest amount of our curriculum is delivered between K-5 and grade five. Our students in elementary school have two half hour lessons every week or 72 lessons in a year. And in intermediate school, we have a course called Career Pathways, in which is required of every seventh grader in our school district. And in that class, they prepare their initial ACP. And as we go through the discussion today, I, I will answer your questions and indicate exactly how this whole program at this point rolls out. And in addition to that, indicate to you all the many things that are yet to be done. So we've classified this particular group as large school districts, urban school districts. So could you briefly just tell us a little bit about the demographics of your district? Uh, Joanne, why don't you start since you ended with it this time? All right. Um, West Dallas as a community uh, is a common, it's West Dallas, West Milwaukee. So though the village of West Milwaukee and the city of West Dallas that is a one school district. The West Dallas West Milwaukee School District serves both of, of those communities. Uh, West Dallas is a school district of very changing demographics as it relates to uh, the socioeconomic status of the children and families in our community uh, the age of the children in our community. And it is also a district that greatly values education, uh, quality education for every student. We do many innovative things within the totalness of our school. And we are proud of what we do for many children and I think if you were to come and to visit us, you would be uh, pleased as I am proud 
of the educational opportunities provided to all students in our school district. Beloit, uh, the Beloit community in general has about 37,000 people. Our school district has around um, 7,000 7, students, uh, roughly 58% minority population, 80% um, free and reduced lunch. Um, and I think one of the uh, things that uh, I enjoy most about our district is they're really beginning to provide a balance of not only career and technical education program, but also that advanced placement programming. We have about 26 AP courses, as well as about 22 transcripted and articulated courses. Um, so it w in, a, in a time where many districts begin looking at cutting CT programming, for instance, hospitality programs and so on, our district has embraced it and um, is really looking at, you know, not that every student shouldn't go to college, but we know that realistically, um, you know, we want to make sure they're prepared to do that. But if they really have a passion for a trade or they want to get a certificate in high school, um, we want to be able to provide that balance for our students. Um, and that's something that I, I think uh, Beloit has done a nice job of doing to this point. Um, the Appleton Area School District's a district of approximately 16,000 um, students, give or take a few hundred. Um, we got 15 elementaries, four middle, and three high schools, and um, a bunch of charter schools. Um, we're predominantly white, and uh, there's approximately 40% economically disadvantaged based on the numbers. I know at the building I'm at, at East, it's closer to 45%. Um, I, I think building on what you just stated, we offer a lot in terms of educational opportunities for all post high school opportunities. Um, and I think the message that a lot of students, parents, community members hear often and don't like to hear often is the four years, the only way to go message. And so for a lot of the work that um, you know we've been focusing on is that when that message is articulated by us as a district and as an ACP um, you know, pilot team, that we're promoting all opportunities and options for kids. Um, and it partners really closely with all the other things that we have in terms of youth options, transcriptive credits. Um, we recently passed a referendum that increased um, technology access, and now we're one-to-one -one with Chromebooks with every kid, and that's really made a huge difference, especially as we've rolled out the ACP piece. And that's really helped, um, I think, open the doors for a lot of students to access things that they might not have you know, accessed prior to that. Well, the proud MPS, Milwaukee Public Schools, uh, we are the largest um, school district in the state of Wisconsin. Um, and I'm gonna just touch on a couple demographic. Um, we have um, approximately 77,000 77, students 86% um, are students of color, 83% um, low income, and about 20% um, are students uh, with disabilities. Um, one of the things that we're very proud of in terms of our senior class uh, last year, they were uh, able to um, secure over $37 million uh, in scholarships. Um, we also, last year, um, sorry, not last year, our 13-14 graduation rate was about 60.9%. And in terms of uh, on-time graduation um, from college, we're at about 37.6%. Um, um, I think uh, one of the things that we're very proud of in our district is that we have an opportunity every day to work with a variety of students from a variety of, of backgrounds, and that's very uh, important for academic and career planning because we, we know that we ha are working with students every day who have different aspirations, and one student can then impact uh, some of the other students. And then also, uh, and we'll touch on this a little bit later, but challenge some of those ideas or biases that we see uh, throughout this academic and career planning uh, process. So having an opportunity to work with students from a variety of backgrounds, aspirations, interests, um, has really afforded us the opportunity to sort of, in an indirect way, challenge some of our 
um, ideas that we initially um, had prior to academic and career planning. And again, I just want to touch on, I really do appreciate the urban environment. Oh, ooh, careful there. Uh, I actually, when I did my career change for in going into education, I did it in the Milwaukee area. I'm a Milwaukee girl, and I student taught in Milwaukee public schools. So I very much appreciate the urban environments that you work in. Um, I, we had an application pro uh, process for becoming a pilot school that included doing a self-assessment and figuring out kind of where you are on the big picture. So I guess my next question to you all as a panel would be, when you looked at that self-assessment rubric, which was required to, we wanted honest answers, we wanted a variety of starting points, what, how did you feel of where you were at, how was that helpful, and I guess what prompted you to actually go through and apply <laughs> after going through the process. So uh, let's start with uh, Ryan. You got the microphone ready there. <laughs> so to be honest, I don't remember what I put. Uh, <laughs> I think I said we were implementing. And um, you know, and the reason I stated that is because almost three er, uh, years ago when I came to the district, my first meeting as a CT, uh, CT director in Beloit was a career cruising meeting. And our, our district decided to kind of adopt that and not fully understanding as a district what the ACP process was going to be. And you know, many people think, well, a, a career cruising, that's the ACP. Well, no, it's, it's not the ACP. It's gonna help manage and be a portfolio piece as well as using some of the resources. So when I initially said implementing, um, you know, we began and uh, did staff development uh, with our, all of our CTE classes. Um, so they were actually began using some of our some of the lessons that were provided by career cruising. Our sixth and eighth grade careers classes also um, began doing different things related to academic and career planning, and using kind of that some of the resources um, in a variety of different areas. Um, also, our freshman transition classes also used um, career cruising and the resources that they've provided. So. Um, we have uh, a wonderful connection with our community. We have about 70 different business partnerships. And through one of those partnerships, it actually funded a dedicated and embedded career advocate in our high school. And that individual is responsible, not solely responsible, but um, she's one that actually helps provide enrichment opportunities for the ACP um, via career panels, job, uh, job shadowing, um, you know, intermediate career exposure, uh, so it's just a variety of uh, you know different things that were really when we we started signing up for that whole ACP pilot that we thought you know we have some things in place and we we think that uh, this process will help us learn a little bit more about ourselves as a district and kind of where we want to go. Joanne, why don't you go next? Well, well, when it came to us in deciding whether we should apply to be a pilot school, we. A group of us in student services and in the CTE department and all of those that of us that would work directly with this including people from post uh, secondary education backgrounds and a, a group of people that represent many things to our students we came to the conclusion that was really pretty simple wasn't something very profound but it was simply this. Our curriculum that we have kindergarten through grade 12, we thought was a pretty solid curriculum as it relates to the development of it, the modification of it yearly, uh, the quality and quantity of uh, instruction that our students received. We also thought that our conferencing, our planning conferencing initiative that we have in our district at grades 5, 8, 9, and 11, and in the 14-15 school year um, in West Dallas, 99% of our parents were in attendance at our individual planning conferences. That gave us a total of 2,903 conferences held in that school year. And with that, we, we knew that good came from that. The only concern that I receive in my office about our conferences is simply this. Parents cannot understand why we don't have conferences at 10th grade. 
We have them at 9 and 11, but Mrs. Quick, why not 10? And my thought to all of that is an honest one. We just do not have the staff to have five levels of conferences. And so we do it at the grades that we think are most important. But that proves one thing, that our parents are very interested in and involved in their children's academic and career planning. And they want to spend time with their child, with their, their conference. And these are student-directed conferences, and they delight in having children talk about themselves personally with their parents and counselors about their academic uh, development and about what their goals are for the future. So we had that in mind. We also know that we have a very, very weak spot in the ACP process in the West Dallas West Milwaukee School District. And that is we have partners, um, community and post-secondary school partners that we work with, but it isn't exactly what we want in quantity or quality. And therefore, we are firm until today that if we participated as a pilot school, we would learn from others how best to do this. And as a result of being a, a pilot school, we would be better than we are at this point. And that's exactly what motivated us to apply to be a pilot school. By the same token, we thought if we applied and were accepted, we would have much to share with other districts as it relates to the quantity and quality of the curriculum that we have in this area. Um, in Appleton, this was really a continuation of our um, the steering committee that was a district level committee on CBL and work-based um, learning. So it was kind of a natural progression to apply for the pilot. Um, we, we had the mindset that if we didn't get accepted as a pilot district, we were gonna do it anyways. Um, so for our district, we we're focusing on one cluster of our district and it's so uh, the um, elementary middle school that feed into East High School. So it's Foster and Madison Middle School is how we're kind of attacking the pilot, um, so to speak. But how I really look at this is that we had a lot of pockets of excellence that were happening all over our district. Um, and it's, it was really organizing um, and, and putting all those pockets, kind of knocking down those silos, so to speak, and um, collaborating within our district with the resources we have in the district, in the community, um, with, with the partnerships with um, both the technical college and two-year school right in town, as well as um, we're very close to um, other four-year schools, um, utilizing those strong partnerships and building on those. And I, I, I don't think there was much thought put into not applying for the pilot. It was just um, you know moving forwards and continuing on um, our journey with um, this CBL process. Um, we're, in the, we're, uh, we're in the process of revising our um, board goal that all students within our district will have a career focus, a career-based learning. A, a dynamic was the word, the adjective that we ended up selecting through many, many revisions. And so um, it's, it's fun being able to look at this as a K, a pre-K-12 initiative um, in, in our eyes, and which is very daunting, <laughs> um, especially when you get into the lower grade levels. But how, how is this gonna migrate from um, you know, those pre-K um, grades through um, graduation and then past graduation. And um, we always bring up that um, process piece. And I think that's probably the biggest word when we think of not only the student and their individual process through academic, academic and career um, exploration, um, but also the ACP process as a district um, and as a community in um, navigating all of the many webs of excellence and all of the struggles that we may be having, um, but knowing that at the end of this, providing an academic plan for every kid is, you know, that's what we should do as educators and as a school district. Um, for our district, we have uh, for a while been involved in some form of academic and career planning. We used to um, call it individual 
uh, uh, planning for students. Um, but I think uh, one of the biggest things for us um, with the pilot is that it's a, it's a great idea. Um, it's not something that was new. It's not something that we were not doing. We participated in a lot of the sessions prior to the pilot coming out. And what we found, um, there was a survey that went out to the superintendents, I believe, about where they were in uh, planning and academic and career planning. And usually in a large district, the, there will be something that comes down. For example, what are you doing uh, with this? And many of you may have experienced that. What, where are you in terms of academic and career planning? Let's just say that was the question. And usually in a large district, that's going to go to the person who handles that. Um, and that's essentially what happened. And so in terms of uh, academic and career planning, there is a lot of things that uh, we are doing as a district, and typically that work is seen as something that the school counselors do. Um, and I think for the pilot deciding uh, the work that we we're doing in the pilot, which is um, very unique, but at the same time, we have the pilot work, and then we have the work that we're doing in terms of the district. So we have five schools, high schools that that we're focusing on for the pilot, but it's not really stopping the driving um, force of what's happening for everyone else in the district. And I think what's, what's very key for us is that as, as this becomes, let's say, the work of the school counselor, how do we expand that out to others in the district? And so that's one of the reasons why uh, we really wanted to be a part of the pilot because that could be our avenue to do that. And I think um, as adults, as educators, we, we're very happy sometimes with our work and what we're doing and, oh, we're making changes and, oh, we're moving. But sometimes um, we've got to do some things differently. We've got to uh, really look at what's the student's response to what we're doing? What does the data tell us? And I think that the academic and career planning, the surveys, um, the implementation of a career tool um, can help us sort of hear from the students about what, what are, how are they receiving what they're getting. And I think it's very, it's very um, good work for us in our district because now um, we're allowing the opportunity for academic and career planning to go beyond career and tech ed and beyond school counseling and into the classroom where the teachers are now exploring how their work contributes. Because I think sometimes we, in a large district, we're just working. The math teacher is teaching. The science teacher is teaching. The assistant principal is working with the parent around discipline. And so we're really working to make sure that everyone has the same language, everyone understands the same thing, so that when you're working with the student, for example, who was suspended, now you can use some of the academic and career planning language to sort of cultivate and shape that student when they return back to school. And so I think uh, the pilot was an easy decision for us um, because of a lot of the great things that we are doing but it's an opportunity for each department to now have some conversations about how it all fits and what's, what's the process for the student, how is the student interpreting, and how is the student go going to use what we're giving them to be successful. But not only that, what's our evidence that we are doing a lot of these great things? So I think it's, it's a combination of both of those things. I'm going to ask the panel a question, but then I want to take it out into the audience and open it up to you. So please be thinking about some questions you might have uh, for this particular panel and based on this unique situation of being large urban schools. So I think, Ophelia, you're really touching on it, so I'm going to hit it right back to you and we'll come down this way. It's kind of a two-part question. So we're talking about size and location, essentially large urban school districts. 
How has being a large urban school district been a help and a hindrance in ACP implementation? I think um, one of the really, really cool things about being large is that you have a lot of resources. So you have a lot of systems in place for doing some things. Um, we have um, in our districts um, a lot of partnerships with businesses. Um, for one of the greatest things I think um, with career cruising, we have been implementing that for some time. We have standards uh, for each student, and but we also um, career cruising has a an elementary component. So we do not start um, working with students in sixth grade. We actually start that in kindergarten. So I think a large district allows you to work with a variety of people, um, but also have some resources available to you. Um, I think the flip side of that, though, is that sometimes you have to, when you are a large district, you have to make tough decisions about how those resources will be used. And so sometimes I think through our process, we can certainly see where some of the gaps are. Um, for example, what are some experiences our students are not getting? Um, we have some students that are getting this experience, but not all. And if we say, okay, work-based learning is something for all students, how do you support that financially? How do you allocate those resources um, to include this important thing over here. So I think a large district has the challenge of uh, not only determining how to allocate funds, with what gets the priority, but I think also um, it's the idealism, the, um, the thinking sometimes, the systems, this is the way I've been doing this, and essentially we're trying through academic and career planning and with counseling, our curriculum, uh, Joanne has talked a lot about curriculum, and we, we've implemented curriculum K-12 um, in our district as well, actually working with West Dallas um, on the elementary side. But when you're trying to get some consistency in a large district around just, for example, um, what's the purpose of an academic and career plan? So making sure that everyone just knows what the purpose is. Why are we doing this? That's a challenge in itself because now you have to look at your, your staff, you have to look at your manpower. How will you communicate this just with the staff that work for the district? Not even talking about the parents, the businesses. Um, so I think um, just to sum up, uh, large school districts has the benefit of having finances and resources, but they also have the challenge of determining how do we allocate those? How do we prioritize what's important based on academic and career planning, which is focusing on the student, not the district determining what's important based on what they think is important. So I think that's a shift. And then lastly, um, scaling the communication so that everyone understands why we are doing this and what we are doing. Because I think in a large district, we immediately want to implement. Oh, oh, that's what we have to do, ACPs? Okay, tell me what we need to do. We hear that a lot during our pilot. How do I, uh, what am I giving to the parent? We immediately, immediately go to the implementation before we even know what we're doing and why we are doing it. So we're really in our district trying to slow folks down and say, wait, let's make sure everyone in this district knows the what, the why, and then we will get to the how. Okay, so I, I, I'm gonna probably repeat some things, so I might be a little shorter at the end, but I, I, I really like the last piece when you're talking about the what, the why, and the how, because we, one of our hindrances or kind of, um, you know, struggles, I guess, in a larger district is, you know, s selling that why to our entire sa staff when we're asking them to do additional things. Um, at the high school level, we are um, rolling this out through our, the use of our advisory and flex time, which is a 30-minute um, block of time every day 
um, there with two advisors on Monday and Friday. And so that, that time has been an absolute blessing because um, without that phys physical dedicated time, I don't know when we would have built this in because we would have had to take time away from another class. Um, and so providing teachers um, the skills, the training, um, one of the subcommittees that I'm a part of through our bigger and larger work-based um, committee, the, the district larger committee is our um, PD, our professional development and ACP pilot process committee. And so we do a lot providing tools directly to our advisors that are um, rolling out the individual lessons or activities through um, our advisory piece. Um, we've been dabbling a lot with Google Classroom to make that a lot more efficient, um, utilizing um, a lot of technology to give the teachers a multimedia um, video, if that's just for them to watch, to help them walk through the process, or if it's for them to watch as a class, and then the student may um, do an activity on their Chromebook, and then there may be a larger discussion. Um, that, that tech piece has been a huge portion of this, and I think it's only gonna get bigger when all of our students are utilizing the same platform on career cruising. Um, the, the things that um, really get me excited is watching watching a student track from sixth grade to the middle school, from the middle school to the high school, and then being able to see that process evolve, um, being able to see an, an archived value or career interest inventory, and being able to have that conversation during a 10th grade conference with a, you know, a parent and a student, and um, kind of um, explore why and maybe what this means to you as a person. And so the, those pieces, I think, um, can be a hindrance, but can also be um, you know, something that can be a positive. Um, probably the biggest things about being a big district that um, you know, I kind of jotted some notes down here were um, resources. Our, our, our larger um, career-based learning group is a very large multidisciplinary group with um, everyone from our superintendent down to um, you know, our school counselors, um, we've got a lot of other administrators, community members, CESA members, um, post-secondary. Um, so we have technical education represented two-year, four-year. Um, we also have some manufacturers um, and other community business members in there, which is really important. We have some parents that make the meeting. Um, we've had students come that are participating in some of these more hands-on and high-impact practices. Um, so we had some of our advanced marketing students come in and talk about the work that they're doing in the community. Um, and I think when individuals within the community and within our buildings see some of the work that kids are already doing, um, it's only gonna um, explain that why piece. Um, when we show teachers what our advanced marketing students are doing um, after school hours in their, um, you know, th this advanced marketing class, marketing things for local businesses and seeing the product they're putting out um, it, it really shows that connection to the world of work and the world of academics and how we as educators are, you know, an integral part of that and are um, mel um, molding both of those worlds is a big part of this and how we can do that efficiently and effectively is, is important. Hopefully I don't uh, repeat half of what he just said, but... Um, <laughs> you can. So I, I think the big thing is as a, as a larger district, again, I don't really feel like we're that large. Um, you know, we have 7,000 students. Our high school is about 1,800 students. Um, there are four intermediate buildings. But I think the, bi the big piece is we do have a lot of community partnerships that makes things, make, provides resources. Um, and as far as kind of the, the hindrance piece, it is making sure staff have the correct professional development and finding the time um, to be able to do that with all the different uh, initiatives uh, statewide and district-wide. Um, one thing that we did, uh, we're trying to accomplish now, uh, at least for the high school portion, and we'll, we're going to be adding the uh, intermediate uh, level, is we created a site. It's really a, it's called reachcareers.org, and that site is um, really a lot, of, a lot of the focus is on our career, career and technical education programming. But within that, we do have, it talks a little bit about academic and career planning, as well as what we've done in our advisory program related to PBIS, re, uh, related to dedicated ACP advisories. Um, and we're trying to come up with a way that um, instead of sending staff to multiple locations um, using, um, for instance, we've used uh, kind of the Google Drive on a lot of occasions. And it can be confusing because staff get in and they move, they move documents and then you can't find where they, you know, where they put it originally. And so we, we wanted a kind of a site to, 
to be able to um, show and archive what we've done to date during our advisory time. And you're exactly right. Uh, if we didn't have that ad the advisory piece, I'm not sure um, how we would actually roll this out to staff. Um, we are a one-to-one -one iPad district, and that has been almost a, a savior uh, as far as the technology piece. Um, so it's been it's been a blessing and a curse. And you have students carrying around an iPad and dealing with all the different types of v uh, VPNs and um, you know d different softwares that they're putting on to get get around and access cameras and access uh, different types of things. So. Um, it's been an eye-opener for our technology department as well because obviously our students are very literate with technology and to counteract and um, try to figure out uh, some of those those pieces have been uh, interesting. So, Our district is in Milwaukee County and Milwaukee County has is a very rich county as it relates to access to uh, many uh, outstanding universities and uh, community groups uh, within our neighborhood. And that has made this process for us very rich and, and very um, inspiring in, in so many ways. And the support that we receive to do all these things from people within our community is much appreciated and much in need. I think we've been working on the development of ACP plans as the development of these plans as a part of a larger process. And when we first got into this, I for one uh, didn't realize that when we say what we're doing is for 100% of our students, 100 percent of their parents for conferences in a district of our size is a challenge that's worthy of pursuing. To do something like this for some kids sometimes under some circumstances is easy, but when it comes to a ACP plan satisfactorily completed for 100% of the students, measured against a rubric for every student, and they have to achieve a rubric score and work on their plan until that's achieved. We then, as a student services department and a CTE department, embarked on many new things in recent years. Example would be, if at the end of your eighth grade, according to our rubric, you do not have a satisfactorily completed plan, our expectation is, is that you will go to summer school to have that happen. Because to enter a West Dallas High School, you are expected to have a satisfactorily completed um, academic and career plan. That has been something that our counselors were never before summer school teachers, which they became in the process of doing this. We hold very strongly to, again, 100%. If it's so good for some, it needs to be that good for all. There are no exceptions to that. And so we put forth a great deal of effort. We have a whole new initiative this year. We've never done it before. We're just at the very beginning of it, and we're just awaiting the outcome. And this is what it is. We partner with Marquette University in a, a, a many things. Uh, Dr. Alan Burkhart, who is the head of the counseling and counseling psychology department at Marquette, has worked for three years doing studies to prove the value of academic and career plans as we do it in our district. We've collected a great deal of research. And in, and in as a part of this partnership that we have with uh, Marquette University, we now have graduate students in the School of Education and in Counseling that come into our high schools and intermediate schools and work as private tutors each and every day with our students. 
So our, our students that need to have extra work in order that their plan meets the highest level on our rubric, they come before um, an individual preparing to be a counselor and one-on-one -on -one they work with them with their plan in order that this can be accomplished. We cannot do this based upon the staff that we have in place in our district. We have students that need individual help by people that know how to help them and that can encourage them to do that. So next year I'll tell you about how that works. <laughs> and I'm sure it will be fun. And, and uh, but that is, um, and I say that as an example of how important we take this idea of academic and career plans to be delivered to 100% of our students at a very high level. It's surely easy to have a less than good academic and career plan. That doesn't take much effort at all. And so with these various initiatives and the various committees that we work with and the use of technology and all those various um, aids that we have to help us, I think over the the next years, this doesn't come overnight, and if we're patient and knowledgeable and dedicated to this, I think that um, a district of our size will find great benefit to the ACP process. I've had the privilege of listening to all three panels today, and one thing that is kind of fun to hear is we all have our challenges, every size, every location. Um, you talk about capacity in reaching all students and capacity to reach all teachers and staff with professional development. Uh, I had Northwood School District in here in the morning rural. Professional development for them is getting all 14 of their teachers into one room, 14. Yet, they are so far remote, talk about access to resources. So, it, it challenges come in both sizes and shapes, and I think that's why we've had these three panels today and why I'm excited we recorded all of them, because I think you can learn from each of them, even if you're whatever size you are. I've learned something new from every panel today. So I'm gonna throw it out here. What are some questions you might have for these panelists? Um, we're from Fond du Lac High School, and so to the Appleton counselor, um, I heard you say you use an advisory time, and we have something similar where they report to homeroom on Monday, but every other day they, we use it as like an RTI intervention currently, but we feel like it'll be crucial in implementation to ACP. So can you tell me like more, more specifically how much time they're getting on ACP, you know, specifically? Yeah, so right now our advisory Monday and Friday, they're with their two advisors. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is more of that RTI um, intervention time um, and enrichment. We, right now for the pilot piece, we're really focusing on one dedicated monthly ACP um, activity. Um, part of this school year, though, as a larger district um, ACP team, we're looking at what that frequency needs to be um, what that actual, and I don't necessarily like calling it curriculum, but what that needs to look like, um, not only at the high school, but also at the lower grade levels, because it's important to have that comprehensive process move with the student as they're going through that process. Um, and so right now, we're strictly doing that monthly on like this Friday's one, but it's happening much more frequently than that. Um, did you want to? Yeah, I was just going to. My name is Matt Mino. I'm principal at Evelyn East High School. Uh, the advisory, too, I mean, in addition to the ACP, we're trying to work in PBIS, uh, link crew, you know, we're using different means, but also trying to hit academic and social emotional, too. So it's feeding through, like, how much time should be allotted for ACP, and that's what we're really working on. But we're just taking small doses of it now, and then hopefully, as we progress and then also find out, I think one of the things we're really looking at is how is that tool career cruising going to assist with that process? And when we break that down, we start exploring that tool more. Could that be steps in the training for both our staff and our students along the way and use those as models for 
you know, that time devoted. But Eric's done an unbelievable job with setting up Google Classroom for each one of our grades, and so that all the advisors have that access to the classroom, and then all of our students have access to that classroom. So then, for example, we post a senior survey, like, where, where are you at right now? Um, what, what are some things? Are, are you afraid of what's going to happen afterwards? You know, do you need to meet with a counselor? All those different kind of questions. But that is a, the resource and the avenue that allows us to really check where things are at. And again, the, the middle, the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's flex time. So it's everything from, you know, uh, making up labs to, uh, you know, going to the enrichment worlds of, you know, be it chorus or health. So, I mean, it's just unlimited abilities. And I was just going to add that um, I'm, my advisory right now is 12th graders, and they obviously have a lot going on in their lives with kind of that big impending question, what am I going to do after high school, with um, the wide range of students that are applied and going off to extremely competitive schools to get into, with students with absolutely no plan. Um, and having that connection, and they obviously know I'm a school counselor, so they assume I know these answers, but having that connection, my colleagues, uh, an ELA teacher, and just having that relationship with those students um, is so beneficial. Um, and that's where being able to roll out the ACP um, building wide is gonna be just phenomenal with the use of our advisory period. Did anyone else want to add anything about advisory periods or find carving out the time to do that, especially in large districts, which can be very difficult? I will say that, um, you know, one, one of our, uh, an, at the beginning of the year, we do a, an annual career and tech fair as well as a, the Wisconsin Education Fair. They're tied together. So we have about 60 uh, companies within our Barkin Arena and then about 100 colleges in the, the field house. And we try to tie the ACP with events that are occurring um, throughout the year. So uh, for instance, they might do a, co a comparing careers um, or a college exploration act activity before the day of the career fair or the, the, the college fair. So um, those are little wrenches that are thrown in throughout the year that you wanna try to make things relevant for them as, as the events come up. Um, so that might require to um, change maybe the you know your yearly plan. It would be wonderful if you could wonderful if you could set something in place and um, kind of you know have the basic piece. But all those enrichment experiences that I think really make up the ACP um, are kind of uh, more difficult to manage when those are going to occur from year to year. The, s the same would be true in West Dallas. Whenever we have any um, programs, activities, career fairs all those various things. Uh, classroom teachers in the elementary school do the preparation for our elementary career fairs. And in our middle schools and high schools, it's done in advisory. And um, that, that is a very important uh, so that those students are prepared for those various things as it would relate to before fairs and various career experiences and also their entry of uh, what was accomplished in those activities into their ACP plan uh, so that all their career experiences would be recorded uh, appropriately. And again, through the use of technology, this has become um, meaningful and also quite efficient through the years. And I was just gonna add that in our district, we use a variety of things. We have advisory, we have uh, seminars. Um, one of the things that we've done this year, um, we adopted a curriculum from the state of Washington, um, and it is essentially um, focuses on um, academic, career, and transition. And just to talk about the high school piece, um, any and every topic you can think about that students need to know, um, it covers it. And what we have done in terms of career cruising, we have incorporated those lessons um, into the curriculum. So our school counselors go into the classroom um, and deliver about 10 lessons per grade level. Uh, so we kind of split that between five and six a semester, and they have a scope and sequence on when that needs to happen. Um, and they go into the classroom. Some go into the advisories and some um, just go into like an English classroom um, and deliver 
um, that curriculum to them. Our elementary curriculum is, is very different from our middle and our high school curriculum. We uh, adopted that from the state of Washington, who um, in the state of Washington, they incorporate that curriculum for their entire state. Um, and so it's, it's very rich with um, working with students on their plans, and it talks a lot of, we deal a lot about their plans, and it's a lot of reflection, lot, lot, lots, lots of reflecting, students writing about um, what their paths are, why they chose those paths. It's, it's remarkable how much reflecting, and that is sort of assisting with that thought process, um, and also helping the counselors and the teachers that are participating build those relationships and share that, that common language. Other I questions? I, oh, I'm sorry. I, I just believe that we, you know, the value of students that enter into the reflection process of everything that we do about academic and career planning and the process with students, that the quality of the reflection that takes place between students and adults and the relationships that students form with those people is just essential to the value that this whole process would have because the academic and career process is very people-centered and we need to have strong ref uh, partnerships and uh, relationships between adults in the lives of these students if we're going to reach the goals that we want them to have. That would be with their teachers and their counselors and surely with their parents in student-directed conferences, um, you know, three or four times uh, throughout their school career. Um, I just really feel in a large school district where there are more people about every day because of, you know, we sure have more than 14 teachers, as you can imagine. In big schools, you know, we have to work very, very hard in order that students have the opportunity to develop these relationships with adults that they trust and believe in. And I think this process can do that if we do it correctly. Um, I'll take two more questions here, and then we're going to do some final closing thoughts. So, Julia? Hi, I'm Julia. I'm the Academic and Career Planning Coordinator for the Madison Metropolitan School District. Okay. Um, and I guess my question is, this might not, I, I guess since I'm a very large school district, this might be for some rather than others, but I am thinking a lot about how um, I'm working with the PBS and social emotional learning people downtown, as well as with curriculum and instruction to make sure that we're aligning the work of cells, as well as making sure that we're supporting academic and career planning in the classroom through project-based learning, career exploration, and identity exploration. And I'm sort of wondering how you're working with either curriculum and instruction and, and cells people to, to integrate um, social emotional learning and then to make sure that academic and career planning is coming to life in the classroom. Well, I think I'll, I'll respond first and then you gentlemen can help me through it. How does that sound? Uh, I, I really think that the, the two divisions within a larger school district that are absolutely key to this is curriculum and instruction and uh, student services or whatever counselors and psychs and social workers and those people do. I think it's a partnership between those people. And I think an, unless and until we form a strong relationship with curriculum and instruction, uh, the ACP process will not be of the level of excellence that we would hope it to be. I think we, we need to have that. And I think our teachers in our buildings um, need to have the opportunity through professional development and through encouragement and uh, with all the positive good things that happen in this process. And then I think they will feel absolutely as privileged educators to have been entrusted with this responsibility. It is a rewarding one. 
and um, I think when, when they're really immersed in this process, um, it becomes that for them, and students are definitely the winners. Um, okay, so a, a couple different things, and I'm, I'm not sure I'm gonna completely answer your question, but um, yeah. sure. Yeah. So, uh, so one one big thing is you know we we talk about this isn't the the counselor's role, and it's not completely their responsibility. And then districts for, such as yourself, you're here and you you're fully immersed in it as you should be. Um, but I, I know there's more. A lot of that responsibility I think are for those individuals that. You know, are, are kind of, I don't know if they're higher in the food chain, but we have to have some people that are able to make change and able to kind of uh, implement programs. And if we can't get our superintendents on board and get our, um, you know, our assistant superintendents on board, that it's going to be hard for anyone to be able to implement programming. And so I, there was a previous discussion, I believe, I believe with the school district in New Berlin, and they were before us of who is on your district steering team. We don't have a counselor on our district steering team, um, but we do have them in our building implementation teams, which um, obviously they would be a huge asset to that. And we're just finally getting to the point now where we're going to be introducing it to our intermediate level. And we have um, you know, a variety of, um, not necessarily counselors, but um, you know, CTE staff that have been involved, careers teachers that have been involved, and it's just kind of, you know, when we talk about curriculum and uh, curriculum coordinators and so on, that career piece oftentimes is, it, it, they may not understand the CTE piece. Um, so just relying on some of those um, non-traditional people that would have input, I think is a big asset to districts to help uh, incorporate in academic and career planning um, throughout uh, the advisory time and, and throughout the district, so. Sounds we're probably running out of time here. Um, at a at a district level, we have a, a, a subcommittee dedicated to that piece, is tying the curriculum to the overall ACP process, and we have a lot of um, top-down leaders in there that can make those changes, which is really helpful. And then at a building level, we really tie it into a, a lot of our um, CSIP goals, our continuous school improvement plans, um, and to implement that throughout the building. But I, I think maintaining and creating a committee um, that has those key people is, I know that's easier said than done, <laughs> but getting those people and actually having effective usage of times and actually coming out with a product instead of meeting to meet is big. Great question, Madison. I've been looking for you the entire conference. <laughs> oh, uh, now, Julia Stig <laughs> <laughs> Julia Stiggy right <laughs> Uh, one of the things I was going to say is that this is something that we are beginning in our district. We are in the same department, um, and I think that it's a great question. And sometimes we're working, we're working on the the same goal, but what one is trying to figure out, the other one has the answer. Uh, we will be presenting uh, to our uh, curriculum and instruction uh, folks in the upcoming. Uh, next few months, and we're going to take them through a series of uh, activities about academic and career planning. So we're we're sort of just introducing this uh, to our school board. Uh, we will be presenting to our school board as well as our um, our larger um, academic office, which um, is probably uh, over a hundred folks, I believe, um, and so after you participate in some exercises, um, I think that will help. So taking them through before you start to begin the work and making the connections, taking them through what the academic and career uh, planning process is, because I don't think um, some of them know that, because um, unless you've had like some side conversations um, so we're kind of starting that in, in the next couple months. We've gone over a little bit, but I just want to give you guys a quick moment. I mean, one sentence. What advice you would give? What advice would you give to folks in large urban school districts about implementing academic and career planning based on your experiences at this point? So real brief, if you can get it down to like one second, what's your big takeaway to tell other districts? 
Why don't you start, Ophelia, and we'll come this way. Sure. Um, I just want to say that anytime you are bringing about change, there is going to be some resistance. And in the, in the sake of our kids and their future, it is worth it. Stick with it. Uh, no complaining. Talk to your fellow ACP community. Um, but anytime you're implementing change, you're going to experience some resistance, and that's going to come from people you thought had the same thinking process that you did. But anytime you're talking about by all for all, you're going to discover that not everyone thinks that, even if they say they do. So stick with it, and it's worth it. It's worth it. I'll just add one more thing, and I think I used the word process about 100 times today, but I, I had a grad school professor that always said trust the process, and I, I can't say that or tell myself that enough with this because this is such a large undertaking, and it's not going to happen overnight to have what we all want in the end. And it's just trusting that process, trusting the people, trusting the leadership, fighting the good fight, and seeing you know the positive outcomes that's going to happen for our kids, our schools, our districts, our communities, our state. Um, it, it's a very cool thing that's happening. And um, to take this momentum and to keep going and trust in that process. I will say that if, if there's something you think believes applies um, towards an ACP or a, a lesson that you think it would be wonderful to try, try it. I mean, a, a lot of times um, after you've done something or you've tried a, a certain lesson, you, there's all sorts of feedback that you will get that, help, that helps improve it. And you can kind of fine tune and ho own in and really figure out, you know, is that lesson s uh, specifically most supposed to be directly re related to our freshman class or kind of differentiating and determining um, what specific grade level. But I, I think the best advice I could probably give is, is try, you know, try something and um, hopefully uh, you can get the feedback that you need to help improve. This is a very uh, responsible task, and it's a task that's a privilege to be a part of. Uh, uh, there are a lot of things in education that we have experienced through the years, and this is one that I think will probably make as great a difference in the lives of students and their families that I can think of in my many years in education. Be patient with yourself and with others. Look upon all the things that have worked for you. Try to forget the things and the risks you take took that didn't work. And in the end, students and their parents will know what a fine job you've done. I cannot top that. Thank you very much, panel. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Thank you so much.